Oh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to today's webinar in collaboration with the Thermal Installation Association of Canada. Uh, my name is Ken Lancaster. I'm the Chief Operating Officer with MCA Canada, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Tristan Bertram. He's the Director of Industry Affairs with uh, with TIAC, the Thermal Insulation Association of Canada, uh, for a very interesting topic on the role of mechanical insulation as it relates to energy efficiency. As Director of Industry Affairs, uh, Tristan plays a vital role in advancing the thermal insulation industry's interest in promoting mechanical insulation solutions for a more sustainable future. He's very passionate about environmental sustainability, and he leads the efforts at TIAC to position mechanical insulation as a critical component of Canada's commercial and industrial landscape. Um, we have some time for questions following Tristan's presentation, which I know um, is going to be a very engaging and enlightening topic. I would encourage you to use the Q&A function throughout the presentation if you do have questions. And as I said, at the end of his presentation, we will open the floor and uh, turn things over to Tristan for some Q&A. So without any further delay, I will now turn things over to Tristan. Uh, and thank you again for uh, for being here, Tristan. Yeah, thank you so much, Dan. Thanks for the introduction. Um, just started sharing my screen here. Uh, can everybody see that? Or Yeah, you're all good on, on my end here, Tristan, so you should be good for everybody. Sounds great. Yeah, thanks again, Ken. Really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for everyone for taking the time to be here today. I know everyone has busy schedules, so I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Uh, overall, the presentation should be pretty quick. Uh, we're about 25, 30 minutes uh, with time for questions afterwards. Uh, so today we're going to talk about mechanical insulation. I'll admit it's not the most exciting topic out there, but I think you'll come to agree that mechanical insulation's impact is quite remarkable. I hope this presentation will strengthen your understanding of our community's purpose, and hopefully by the end you may discover ways that you can contribute to realizing our vision. All right. Uh, before we get started, I just want to quickly introduce myself. Um, as Ken mentioned, I'm Tristan Bertram, Director of Industry Affairs for the Thermal Insulation Association of Canada. Uh, I'm the third generation in my family to work in mechanical insulation. Uh, it all started with my grandfather, who spent over 40 years uh, in the industry working as an insulator. Uh, ultimately, it's my family's connection and history in this field that fuels my passion for promoting it. This is why I'm thrilled to be here today to discuss mechanical insulation and the value that our community provides. So these days, it's all about finding ways to be greener and smarter with our energy use. And mechanical insulation plays a massive role in that journey. It's like the hidden superhero in our built environment, quietly making a big difference in how we save energy and cut down on our carbon footprint. In fact, one of our affiliated provincial associations created Captain Insulation as their mascot. I did mean hidden superhero when I said it, because I'm sure you've never heard of this guy. Uh, so for the next bit, we're going to talk, we're going to explore just how important mechanical insulation is in our quest for sustainability. It's not just about keeping systems warm or cool. It's about making a real impact on the environment. We're talking about less waste, lower emissions, lower operating costs, and a brighter, greener future. So today we're going to talk about four areas steering our path towards a sustainable future. Uh, first, I'll quickly introduce TIAC and provide some background information on our community and our objectives. Following that, we'll discuss mechanical insulation's impact on carbon reduction and resource conservation. Then I'll highlight insulation energy appraisals and the value they provide for asset owners. And then finally, we'll discuss the value of QAC programs when reducing carbon emissions and operating costs. So let's jump right into Canada's thermal insulation community. Incorporated in 1963, TIAC is the National Industry Association for Manufacturers, Distributors, and Contractors of Commercial, Industrial, and Institutional Thermal Insulation, Asbestos Abatement, and Fire Stop. At TIAC, we envision a world where mechanical insulation stands at the forefront of climate rehabilitation and carbon emissions reduction, emphasizing thermal efficiency to create a more sustainable world without sacrificing industry. Our mission is to ensure the continuous, highly efficient and safe operation of all mechanical systems across Canada's industrial, institutional and commercial, commercial sectors. By achieving this, we intend to reduce carbon emissions and establish Canada as the global leader in climate rehabilitation, energy efficiency and clean economy. 
And our purpose is to continually forge, support, and promote a community of experts rallied around advancing the thermal insulation industry. So TIAC has six affiliated provincial associations spanning the country, uh, BCICA in British Columbia, uh, TIA for Alberta and home of Captain Insulation, uh, SICA for Saskatchewan, uh, MICA in Manitoba, MIAO for Ontario, and AIQ for Quebec. Uh, there's a member directory link at the end of the presentation uh, also to our website that has links to the provincial associations uh, and our member directory for uh, TIAG members in your area. Okay, so let's talk about mechanical insulation's role in forging a sustainable future. TIAG and the National Insulation Association, or NIA, have a long-standing history of collaboration, partnership, and industry advancement. This study comes to us from NIA, which commissioned a third party survey to evaluate energy savings and carbon emissions reductions from installing ready to use insulation products. Uh, a big thanks to NIA for sharing the study with us today. So the first intent of the study was to assess the significance of mechanical insulation systems in helping North American industries achieve and maintain their decarbonization goals. And the second intent was to inform facility owners, engineering firms and others about the value of mechanical insulation as an energy saving and decarbonization technology that should be prioritized. So two main questions were asked in the study. How does mechanical insulation contribute to energy savings and long-term reduction in greenhouse gas emissions within commercial and industrial sectors? And number two, how much is that risk or loss due to under-insulated areas? So I'll quickly take you through the scope of the study before we get into the results. Mechanical insulation encompasses all thermal, acoustical, and personnel safety uh, requirements for mechanical piping, equipment, and HVAC applications, ranging from cryogenic levels at minus 250 degrees Celsius to above 530 degrees Celsius. However, for the purpose of the study, only high operating service temperatures were included, uh, and this temperature range was defined as 66 to 427 degrees Celsius. Uh, only ready-to-use materials were included in the study, as the data behind non-ready-to-use materials is just harder to quantify. Uh, the study included one to three inch thick pipe insulation for two to 12 inch iron pipe sizes and one to three inch thick board insulation, which is really only a small portion of the available mechanical insulation products. So this study was based on manufacturers production data for ready to use fibrous and granular insulation. Based on, a uh, sorry, based on historical production data combined with industry growth trends, NIA was able to extrapolate insulation usage for a total 11 year window. So they had their base year, five years of historical data and five years projected data for the 11 year total. Okay, so NIA estimated that the United States represents 91% of the findings, whereas Canada represents 9%. And finally, the study did not include any under insulated areas as defined here. So items that were left uninsulated, items that were co-compliant, items that were damaged or not maintained properly, things like that. So due to NIA's deliberate focus on higher operating service temperatures and only ready to use materials, the findings are more conservative when compared to the broader mechanical insulation industry. Several insulation types and a wide temperature range were excluded from the study, also contributing to the conservative findings. So utilizing manufacturing data from Johns Manville, Knopf Insulation, Owens Corning, and Rockwell Technical Insulation, the following data illustrates the cumulative results assuming that 90% of the insulation produced by these four manufacturers was correctly installed. Again, the findings don't include the potential partial benefit from the under-insulated areas, which amounts to an estimated 10% of the production total. So over the 11 year window, if 90% of the insulation produced by these four manufacturers was installed correctly, it accounts for an estimated $278.3 billion in operational cost savings and seven and a half billion metric tons of carbon emissions reduction. This data not only underscores the economic impact on operational efficiency, but resonates deeply with TIAC's mission. 
By significantly reducing carbon emissions and promoting sustainable practices, we actively contribute to TAG's vision of advancing thermal efficiency, sustainability, and the reduction of carbon emissions. This aligns seamlessly with our commitment to forging a greener, more sustainable future without sacrificing industry. So how do those results compare to other carbon reduction initiatives and greenhouse gas offset equivalents? Well, instead of insulating mechanical systems, you could eliminate the emissions from 1.7 billion gasoline powered vehicles each driven for one year. You could eliminate 17.4 billion barrels of consumed oil. Or to offset the emissions, you could install 2.1 million wind turbines, each running for one year. You could replace 286 billion incandescent light bulbs with LEDs, or plant 9 billion acres of forest to offset the carbon output. Here's a chart just showing all of the equivalency data. Uh, there's just a few more examples in there if you want to take a look. There's also a QR code at the end of the presentation with a link to the data as well. So I mentioned that under insulated areas weren't in included in those findings. So what's the cost of incorrectly installing mechanical insulation? Now I estimated that the under insulated areas would, estimate, would amount to 1.7% for commercial and 8.3% for industrial applications, giving us a combined total of 10%. This is due to installation errors, inaccessibility, failure to meet specifications, et cetera. So in terms of our 11 year total, that means 751 million metric tons of CO2 savings are at risk due to under insulated areas. So again, how would those savings compare to other initiatives if those areas were properly insulated and the CO2 reduction was realized? Instead of insulating, you could eliminate 167 million vehicles from the road. You could eliminate 1.7 billion barrels of consumed oil. Or to offset the emissions, you could install 209,000 wind turbines, each operating for one year. You could replace 28.5 billion incandescent light bulbs with LEDs. Or you could plant 896 million acres of forest to offset the carbon output. Again, here's the same chart showing the full cost equivalency calculations. Um, same examples are in there as well, just re relating to the costs. So this data is why Tayek believes our community can significantly contribute to a more sustainable future without sacrificing industry. Our membership's unyielding strive for excellence ensures that insulation is installed correctly the first time, mitigating the risk of under-insulated areas and maximizing our collective efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Again, QR code at the end of the presentation that has the full study and all of this uh, data as well. So I'd like to add one more example from Naya uh, that hopefully resonates on a more personal level. Uh, one average pickup truck emits approximately 18,000 pounds of CO2 when driven 32,000 kilometers. So that's roughly 9,000 pounds of CO2 per year. So in order to offset the emissions from the truck, we can plant 360 trees, replace 310 incandescent light bulbs with LEDs, or we can insulate eight feet of four inch pipe operating at 176 degrees Celsius with just two inches of insulation. Now, I hope you can understand the source of my passion for sustainability through efficiency. These numbers are staggering, and yet most people have never heard of mechanical insulation. It's my mission to change that, and insulation energy appraisals are an incredible tool to help with that mission. So TAG's member base has the ability to conduct on-site insulation energy appraisals. These appraisals assess the quality of existing mechanical insulation systems. Insulation energy appraisals provide key information to the asset owner regarding carbon emissions reduction, operating cost reduction, and an investment payback period. This insulation energy appraisal was conducted for a school in New Brunswick. Uh, the facility was previously insulated with one inch thick fiberglass insulation. However, as you'll see, the energy appraisal identified several under-insulated areas, which translates to higher operating costs and unnecessary CO2 emissions. Uh, thanks to Josh Gerard with the International Association of Heat and Frost Insulators and Allied Workers, who conducted this appraisal and shared the data. Okay, so here's an example of an uninsulated valve. 
with an operating temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, this exposed valve generates 2.3 metric tons of primarily unnecessary CO2 per year. The operation of the system with the uninsulated spot incurs a cost of $955 per year. However, by correctly insulating it with one and a half inches of fiberglass, the operating cost drops significantly to $93 annually, providing a five-year savings of $4,300. Regarding Tyke's vision of sustainability through efficiency, insulating this one spot reduces the annual CO2 emissions by 2.1 metric tons per year. That's a 91% reduction in CO2 emissions. So here's another example of an under-insulated spot showing a significant thermal leak. Due to efficiency loss and an increased fuel consumption, this thermal leak generates 1.8 metric tons of unnecessary CO2 per year. The operation of this under-insulated spot incurs a cost of $790 per year. And by correctly insulating it with one and a half inches of fiberglass, the operating cost drops to $83 annually, providing a five-year savings of $3,500. So although the spot was previously insulated, it was done so incorrectly. Upgrading the insulation system reduces the annual CO2 emissions by 1.5 metric tons. Again, that's an 83% reduction in carbon emissions. So this highlights the impact our membership has on meaningful carbon reduction. By adhering to high quality standards and proper insulation, installation methodology, insulation contractors ensure that mechanical systems operate as efficiently as possible minimizing the risk of underinsulated areas and unnecessary CO2 emissions. So typically an insulation energy appraisal would include more than two examples, but I'm sure you get the idea. So by fixing the underinsulated areas, the client was able to reduce 26 metric tons of CO2 per year with a total reduction of 538 metric tons over the estimated 20 year lifespan of the insulation system. Through operational cost savings, the school district recovered its $19,900 investment in just 1.9 years. The increased efficiency provided a five year savings of $53,000 and a cumulative 20 year positive cash flow of $195,000. So all of that information sounds great, but it really doesn't mean much if the insulation is incorrectly installed. QAC programs help close that loop. Quality assurance certificates are crucial to achieving the data shared in an insulation energy appraisal. Without certified work adhering to specifications, the value of an insulation energy appraisal diminishes, emphasizing the crucial role of quality assurance in validating IEA data. So that brings us to our last section, uh, the value of QAC. So currently, Canada hosts two QAC programs for mechanical insulation overseen by the provincial associations BCICA and AIQ. BCICA pioneered Canada's first insulation QAC program and has proven its success over many years. AIQ and TIAC partnered to create a nationally available QAC program for, for provincial associations to utilize. And drawing on the expertise of AIQ and BCICA, TIAC strives to ensure QAC programs are active across the country. This initiative aims to enhance the quality of insulation systems, ultimately amplifying our collective impact on carbon and cost reduction. So I just wanted to share a general overview of an insulation QAC program. The process begins with the owner or engineer designating the project as a QAC job. This ensures that only experienced and reputable contractors are eligible to bid insulation work. Qualified QAC contractors are then invited to bid the project. Once a contractor is selected, they register the project with the relevant governing body, such as BCICA or AIQ. A pre-construction meeting is then held with all stakeholders, including the mechanical and insulation contractor, general contractor, QAC inspector, and engineer. This is one of the most important meetings ensuring comprehensive planning, coordination, and ultimately setting the stage for the project's success. So once all the preparations are complete, the project starts and inspections are scheduled at key milestones throughout the project. 
the total number of inspections just depends on the size of the project. After the final inspection, a comprehensive project overview is generated and sent to all parties, identifying, identifying any issues to be resolved. After successful installation and final inspection, a quality assurance certificate is issued to the owner. This certificate is tangible evidence of the project's adherence to specifications, instilling confidence in its integrity and performance. Ultimately, QAC programs ensure that mechanical systems operate as efficiently as possible, aligning with TIAC's mission of reducing carbon emissions without sacrificing industry or economy. So what's the value for mechanical contractors? QAC programs ensure that only educated, qualified tradespeople install mechanical insulation. This ensures that insulation systems meet project specifications and that the correct products and application methods are used. This assurance backed by detailed installation inspections translates into several key benefits for mechanical contractors. So mechanical contractors can mitigate the risk of liability associated with system failures resulting from core insulation. QAC programs ensure that contractors adhere to rigorous quality standards, reducing the likelihood of insulation related issues that could lead to costly repairs or legal disputes. These photos underscore the critical importance of insulation methodology and material choice in preventing failures and damage caused by improper insulation. They illustrate how the right approach ensures longevity and durability. Partnering with an insulation contractor enables mechanical contractors to deliver high quality installations to their customers. Quality insulation improves energy efficiency, comfort, and overall building performance, thereby increasing customer satisfaction and loyalty. Proper insulation is essential for optimizing operating efficiency. TIEX insulation contractors have the experience to install insulation materials correctly, minimizing heat loss or gain, and maximizing energy efficiency. Over the long term, this translates into lower operating costs for building owners or tenants and reduced carbon emissions. Inadequate insulation can lead to various issues, including corrosion under insulation or CUI, condensation and mold, reduced performance, greater carbon emissions, and more. Insulation contractors ensure that insulation is installed to project specifications, protecting the mechanical system from premature failure and extending service life. Uh, the before and after photos here showcase the difference that proper insulation makes in, con in controlling condensation on un uninsulated pumps, which also improves operating efficiency. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, QAC certified insulation contractors are experienced in project planning, coordination, and execution. By entrusting insulation related tasks to certified professionals, mechanical contractors can streamline project management, minimize coordination efforts, and optimize project timelines, leading to smoother project execution and improved overall efficiency. Collaboration between mechanical and insulation contractors fosters synergy and teamwork. By fostering open communication and aligning objectives, mechanical contractors can cultivate strong partnerships with insulation contractors, improving project outcomes and customer satisfaction. Collaborating with an insulation contractor provides a competitive advantage. A strong focus on, an, on achieving excellence in insulation practices aligns with ESG criteria and helps distinguish mechanical contractors from their competitors. This approach can attract new clients and strengthen market position over time. And finally, QAC, pro QAC programs emphasize proper installation techniques and attention to detail, resulting in a cleaner, more professional finish. This enhances the visual appeal of the mechanical system and the surrounding spaces, leaving a positive perception of the building's quality and craftsmanship. So this example of flat versus slope duct systems illustrates how installation methodology and material choice can significantly impact longevity and asset protection. So all of these examples shared not only highlight enhanced aesthetic appeal and asset protection, but also highlight reduced liability, increased efficiency, and enhanced customer value. Once again, a big thank you to Naya 
BCICA, AIQ, the International Association of Heat and Frost Insulators, all temperature thermal insulations, and Type 5 contracting for sharing these, uh, the examples and the data included in the presentation. So moving forward, I'd like to invite you to collaborate with us to advance sustainability through mechanical insulation. We can harness the power of collaborative partnerships, QAC programs, and skilled craftsmanship to elevate customer satisfaction and reduce Canada's carbon output. I encourage you to join us in executing our mission by working with a reputable insulation contractor and sharing the impact of proper insulation systems with your clients. There's a QR code on the next slide that has more resources and a member directory to help you connect with an insulation contractor in your area. Uh, once again, thank you all for your time today. I really appreciate the opportunity to share more about our industry. Uh, with that, we can move on to some questions. Uh, just to note, we do have two representatives from, uh, on the call from BCICA and AIQ who can also answer any specific questions about QAC programs if you have them. Thanks, Tristan. Um, as mentioned earlier, there is a the Q and A function is built into Teams. If there are any questions for Tristan um, for that presentation, and Tristan, I believe if we do follow this QR code, we will get access to the report as well. Yes. Yeah. So it includes um, contact information for myself, a member directory for Taya, uh, the full study from Naya, uh, and a few other links as well. So. Um. One of the things that caught my eye, you, you talked about the return on investment for the uh, New Brunswick Public Schools, and it was uh, 1.9 years, I think, was if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Is that, do you have any data on sort of what the average ROI is, or is that pretty standard? Um, There's yeah, a lot of variables I would appreciate, but or I yeah. appreciate. Yeah, no, absolutely. There, there is a lot of variables depending on the extent of the insulation energy appraisal in the system and how many under insulated areas were identified. Um, so, and, and the size of the building as well, right? Um, so obviously the bigger, the, the more cost associated with upgrading the insulation system. Uh, but all of the data that I've seen that has been shared with me has been under the two year ROI mark, which is uh, pretty short in the grand scheme of things when we're talking uh, carbon reduction and the, uh, the cost savings that you get from that as well so great uh, we do have a question here um, tristan thank you for the presentation does tyac have any data on the embodied carbon of the different insulating materials used in insulation i.e I fiberglass poly so or elastometric um yeah so we we do have i don't have the facts and figures with me um but there are um data regarding the embodied carbon from um producing all of the insulation and, um, products. Um, typically, uh, the, amount of ins uh, the amount of carbon reduced from utilizing the insulation products compared to what it takes to make it is obviously significantly greater um, because you have you know, 20 years plus of an insulation system that's going to contribute to reducing carbon. Um, so it's great, greatly outweighs what it takes to, to produce the, the products. I can uh, I can definitely uh, gather some data and share it with you. I don't I don't know if I'll have a contact list to be able to contact uh, uh, all of the attendees, but I can certainly send that out as well. The, the follow up to that question is that something that can be shared, please? So I'm sure yeah, there's I'll, some interest on that. So appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Is there any other question? I'm not seeing any other questions right now, Tristan. Um, yeah. But no worries at all. Um, what like, I what I would suggest for sorry you can go ahead there's a little bit of a delay so yeah go ahead <laughs> it's, it's technology five years after COVID and we're still struggling with it um, sorry there is another question thank you for the information today uh, will a recording be available yes there will be a recording of the presentation available posted on our website and our social channels um, I believe TIAX as well. So. Um, what I would suggest is, as uh, Tristan was going to say, I think the QR code does contain Tristan's contact information as well. Um, so if there are any follow up questions, either reach out, please feel free to reach out to MCA Canada or to uh, to Tristan through that contact information. Uh, Tristan, on behalf of MCA Canada, thank you very much for taking the time today, providing some of your insights on that. I think um, 
there's certainly some more collaboration that we can look to between our two associations on information sharing and resource sharing. So we appreciate you taking the time and uh, and the information that you put in front of our members today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and thanks for the opportunity. Like you mentioned, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, at any time, email, call, whatever works best. I'm happy to answer any questions and share more information. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you everyone for attending and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Tristan. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. So, take care.